Update, brought to you by Simcox Advocates. Advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit simcox.com or call 690 300. Manx Radio's Update with Barry Redfern. Good evening, it's half past five. This is Update for Monday the 22nd of January from Manx Radio. Tonight, that the Southern Swimming Pool may not close is not a U-turn, says the Education Minister. And just when you thought we'd perhaps seen the last of the storms, along comes another. We have the latest updates and what's coming next. And some beef products are recalled. More on those stories, plus weather, traffic and travel news in just a moment. Man Benham for all your business and legal needs. Well, now at 29 minutes to six, the news headlines from Christian Jones. Fast to my Christian. Fast to my. Significant constituency changes may be needed ahead of future elections on the island. That's from the organisation tasked with reviewing the way general elections are carried out, as it's published a report with 13 recommendations, including boundary changes and the possibility of e-voting, among others. People suffering from minor conditions will no longer be able to get a prescription for treatment if the medication is readily available over the counter. Instead, from the 29th of January, they'll be advised which treatments or medicine to purchase by their GP, nurse or community pharmacist. The government claims it'll save money. And the first of a three-day public inquiry into Ramsey Commissioner's boundary extension has closed, which saw representatives from three local authorities put forward their arguments in favour and against. Ramsey believes it's had capacity and is looking to increase the boundary into neighbouring Lazare and Goff, something the clerk insists isn't a land grab. In international news, two people have died as Storm Isha has brought strong winds and power cuts to the UK. A man in his 60s died in a fatal collision in Northern Ireland, while another man in his 80s crashed into a tree near Falkirk. The COVID inquiry has heard how Scotland's chief medical officer told colleagues to delete WhatsApp messages at the end of every day. Professor Sir Gregor Smith's comments have been added to a growing debate around the retention of informal messages by senior decision makers during the pandemic. And the UK economy is expected to grow more than previously thought both this year and next. One of the country's most influential forecasters says it now expects GDP will increase 0.9% this year. Those are the update news headlines next at 6. Secure tomorrow today with Man Benham's private client team. Manx Radio Weather with Manx Glass and Glazing. And the winds will ease tonight and swing to the south before becoming strong again tomorrow as rain and drizzle develops. Then later tomorrow evening and overnight into Wednesday, another spell of gale or severe gales is likely with gusts of 60 miles per hour in places for a time. The outlook gradually becoming less windy on Wednesday with sunshine and isolated showers. But uh, wait for it. We've got more news about the weather coming up a little bit later in the programme. Sunrise uh, tomorrow, 8.20. High water this evening at uh, 9.20, that's 5.9 metres. Low water in the morning at 3.55, 1.7 metres. And high water tomorrow morning is at uh, 1 minute past 10, that's 6.1 metres. Manx Glass and Glazing are proud to be an approved contractor with Construction Isle of Man. Call the team on 674 573 or visit the Showroom on the Snugborough Trading Estate. The Education Minister insists the recent announcement that the Southern Swimming Pool may not have to close is not a U turn. That's despite the Department of Education, Sport and Culture previously recommending the facility be closed at the end of March due to financial constraints. Julie Edge says her position hasn't changed. As a national politician, I've followed all due process. There is a a stringent process for papers to go into the Council of Ministers. Once that decision was reached in the Council of Ministers, the most important area for me was to ensure the sensitivities around the employers at the swimming pool was covered off first. So there was a briefing for all Timworld members, including Southern MHKs, on the 9th of January. And then on the following day, the 10th of January, I went to the Southern Board 
to deliver the outcome of the recommendation, and it is only a recommendation, Department of Education, Sport and Culture cannot close a pool. We can only recommend, and the fiscal responsibility I had at that point for my department was to protect the finances and look at it, and the additional deficits that were coming forward from all of the community pools were not affordable by my department for the budget that we receive what we have said as a, as a government, we'll continue to support the existing subvention of 434,000. And that's the, the analysis that's been, it's been carried out with that subvention as the analysis. Now that is then down to the local authorities to raise additional rates in the whole of the south of the island. And that's part of that new analysis that comes forward. So I haven't done a U-turn. I've said I will continue to subvent with the existing budget. The additional funding that was requested by the Southern Pool Board, they are now saying they don't need that. So I think perhaps people should think about what the the significant change has been here. Meanwhile, a Southern MHK says he won't rest on his laurels until work is complete for Castle Russian High School and its pool. The comments follows on from last week's news. We've just heard about the uncertainty over the future of the Southern swimming pool. Tim Glover says it's a massive priority. We need that new school uh, with a lot more urgency than I think has been applied so far. And that new school needs to have that sports hub and most definitely a six-lane swimming pool facility to bring the south of the island on parity and in fairness to the rest of the island. I think this uh, this has been a, a, a classic exemplar of how not to engage with the community, uh, how not to engage with uh, the stakeholders, because all of this came as a, a surprise to us. Um, you need to engage with people bring them along. Uh, and that includes Komen uh, dealing with the backbenchers uh, within uh, Timworld. They are not aloof. They never should be. They're accountable to the electorate. Update brought to you by Simcox Advocates. And the time now, 23 minutes to six. Well, Storm Aisha has blown through the island this weekend, as we well know. Several buildings have been damaged by the high winds and a number of trees were blown down. But it's likely we're going to be hit by another one tomorrow, Storm Jocelyn. Stuart Davison joins me now from the Ronaldsway Met Office. So, Stuart, what can we expect? Yes, hello there. Good evening. So uh, we are expecting another storm tomorrow. So this named, as mentioned, Storm Jocelyn. That was named by Met Airan, the Irish Met Service. So they've issued an orange weather warning for parts of the west and northwest of Ireland. In addition, the UK Met Office has issued an amber warning. That's for parts of western Scotland. For the Alaman, though, the storm will be less intense compared to yesterday in Storm Isha. It is less deep, lowest pressure around 963 millibars between Scotland and Iceland, whereas Isha was uh, deeper than that, 947 millibars. In any case, we're still expecting a period of severe gales due to tomorrow. Gusts into the 60s of miles an hour can be expected, and that risk period is for tomorrow evening and into the early hours of Wednesday morning before the wind moderates during the rest of Wednesday. Before we get to the strongest winds, though, tomorrow evening, we are expecting a spell of wet weather during the morning tomorrow, so that may lead to some standing water on the island's roads. And this rain largely clearing in the afternoon with some showers following. But I think it's the wind that will be the main thing for tomorrow night. And the main thing to emphasise as well, it will be less intense compared to Isha that we had yesterday. Thank you very much, Stuart. Well, that's something to... uh look forward to well rather not (laughs) so as we've just heard another storm on its way midway through the week and once again it will prove challenging for travellers and for the airlines and of course the ferry operators to keep services operating news about uh, travel in a few moments but first here's john moss when is the island like a piece of cod when it gets battered and battered it's certainly been both at the weekend and it will be again this week Uh, though not quite to the same extent. With a raft of storms jostling to get at us, it's appropriate the next storm in line is called Jocelyn. It's due to reach us tomorrow evening. A severe gale could materialise through the night and into Wednesday, with gusts of 60 miles an hour in places at times. The island's two forms of exit and entry, the airport and the ferries, are of course having to try and cope as best they can in the face of this extreme winter weather. 
On Sunday, flights in and out were affected. It was testing for both crews and the passengers. But the most striking example of difficulties brought on by the weather was for the steam packet. From this morning onwards, today, the Manxman was cruising up and down the English coastline, from Anglesey to Morecambe, back and forth quite a few times, with the company feeling that having their flagship at sea was preferable to the possibility that, being moored in Douglas, even with the newly installed dolphins and mooring points, the £80 million vessel might not be as secure as they would have liked. In the mid-afternoon today, the Manxman returned to Douglas and docked smoothly. But will this manoeuvre, leaving port and going to sea, be necessary in future, when the wind blows this fiercely and, importantly, from this quarter? Docking at Hesham is currently challenging at the best of times and is even harder in these conditions. But if we are in future to experience more gales, coping will be the order of the day in terms of passenger travel and keeping the island shelves stocked. Sea Watch with the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company. Well, there's good news and there's bad news. And as you probably already know, we've uh, had quite a few seri- uh, ferry sailings cancelled. But uh, the Douglas to Hesham is expected to sail at uh, quarter to eight, expected in Hesham at 11.30 this evening. That's based on the latest forecast. And uh, the return trip from Hesham to Douglas, departing at uh, 2.15 uh, overnight, expected back in Douglas at six. That's also predicted to sail based on the latest latest weather forecast. As for the rest of the sailings, just can't say it all depends and apparently the final decision will be made by the master at seven o'clock tomorrow morning. Follow the Steam Packet on Twitter for the latest sailing information. Some beef products from Isle of Man Meats have been recalled following recent delays to its production line. The company says a packaging machine developed a fault between Christmas and early January and there was a disruption while it waited for specialist engineers to arrive on island. Managing Director Mia, uh, sorry, Rebecca Mia has been speaking to Lewis Foster. While we think the risk is incredibly minimal, we have very high standards in terms of our product quality um, and our food safety guidelines. So after investigation and looking at this more carefully, we just want to make sure that products are brought back to their point of purchase if we feel they fall within this batch and it is a single batch that has gone into retail that they need to return. What particular products, you say there's a there's a certain code we can look out for? So it will be beef products specifically, so it could be on minced or diced or a joint of beef, and the batch code will be printed onto the label 19590. For anybody who's perhaps already eaten their product, is there any real cause for concern? There is very, very little cause for concern. This is a precautionary measure. It's something that we've chosen to do just because we feel it falls outside our high standards. Is this all resolved now as the packaging machine been fixed? Uh, yes, fully resolved. We're back up to full production. I just wanted to apologise really. We at Alamo Meats are very disappointed because pre-Christmas, we were at higher levels of production with significant improvement across Isle of Man Meats and getting real support from our consumers, from our customers, from our farmers. All fully up and running now and we just want to get back to those levels that this packaging machine unfortunately disrupted. And those delays in the production, is there any backlog to clear there at all? In terms of cutting and delivery to consumers, no. We do always have a forward booking system for our farmers because they like to run their businesses on a booking system to know when their animals are going to be ready, finished and come into the plant. But we are rapidly catching up on where we were before the machine breakdown. Manx Radio Business Briefing. And the UK and European markets started the new trading week in positive territory with regional investors keeping an eye out for preliminary consumer confidence data from the Eurozone for January. Global currencies steadied as looming central bank decisions in Japan and Europe and vacillating market expectations for US Federal Reserve rate cuts forced a pause in the dollar's data spurred rally this year. Oil prices fell as economic headwinds pressured the global oil demand outlook and outweighed geopolitical concerns in the Middle East and an attack on a Russian fuel export export terminal over the weekend. 
Gold prices eased as investors rolled back expectations of a US interest rate cut at the end of March, with a surge in equity markets further dampening interest in safe haven bullying. Caterer Compass Group confirmed on Monday today that it's agreed to buy rival CH and Co in a £475 million deal. Compass said CH and Co has a highly regarded management team and a long track record of strong performance, delivering a bespoke and high quality food offer through several sector brands. The company, which provides services in the UK and Ireland, currently generates annual revenues of around £450 million and operates across a range of sectors, including business and industry, sports and leisure, education and healthcare. The Stock Market Report. Brought to you by Ramsey Crookall. And at the close, the FTSE uh, 100 is... Uh, 7,487 at uh, that's uh, 0.35% up. DAX 0.77% up at 16,683. 10 to 5, uh, the Dow Jones was up 0.39% at 38,009. SP five, uh, is uh, 5,004. Uh, sorry, <laughs> S&P 500, 4,857, that's up 0.36%. NASDAQ, uh, that's uh, 15,389, that's uh, 0.51%. Up. Exchange rates, the pound against the US dollar, 1.271. Pound against the euro is 1.167. And the commodities, gold is down 0.31% at uh, 2023. And Brent is up at 1.66% at $79.63 uh, dollars a barrel. You've got an investment plan? Yeah, Mike set it up. But don't you need loads of money to do that? Not this one. It's called Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall and you pay in monthly as little as £100. So it's like saving regularly, really helping us invest in the future for a house, of the kids' education. £100 a month? I could easily do that. <laughs> you should. The sooner you start, the better. Invest in your future with as little as £100 a month. Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall, the island's investment specialist for 75 years. Call 717171 or visit ramseycrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. Manx Radio Sport. And it's fast to my Sean Cowper. Fast am I. FC Isle of Man has confirmed Dan Simpson sustained a fractured leg during Saturday's home game against Kendall Town. The midfielder was forced off just before half-time. In a statement, the team said it was a sad sight to see, especially as he worked so hard and for so long to not only get fit but also to get into the team again after the knee injury he sustained during the first fixture of the 22-23 season. Unfortunately, this update isn't as positive as manager Paul Jones hoped in his post-match interview, and we confirm that Dan has sustained a fractured leg. After visiting him earlier on today, Paul has confirmed that Dan is comfortable and in good spirits, all things considered. Meanwhile, FC Isle of Man's weekend opponents are still on the island after the strong winds caused travel disruption. Kendall Town FC were the visitors to the bowl on Saturday for the NWCFL Premier Division match. Appearing on BBC Breakfast this morning, the club's chairman said they've been told by EasyJet they may be here until Thursday, though they've booked onto earlier flights and sailings. Kendall Town's match with Prestwick Hayes tomorrow has been called off as a result. And TT Lap record holder Peter Hickman has been named International Road Racer of the Year at the Irish Motorbike Awards. The 13-time TT winner took four victories at the 2023 races, including in the second Superstock race, where he smashed the lap record with a 136.358 mile per hour lap around the mountain course. There were two awards for the 25-time TT race winner Michael Dunlop, as he took home the King of the Roads and Team of the Year prizes. The TT's fastest ever newcomer, Glenn Irwin, was named Irish Motorcyclist of the Year. Still with Sport, FC Isle of Man manager Paul Jones says his team did really well this weekend against Kendall Town. A late goal at the last minute let the team draw with their opponents and also secure the first points for this year. Paul Jones says they've needed the draw more than they realised. You know, firstly, 
they've missed the penalty, haven't they? You know, quite late on, and it's never a penalty in a million years. Um, so at that moment, the the group could think, "Oh God, here we go again." You know, it's all going against us. We've played well, and we're going to lose the game two 0 The lads missed the penalty, and then you can just immediately sense that, "Oh, we can win this, or we can get back into it." And we need that mindset from minute one, not not when you feel like the game's going in your direction. You've got to make the game go in your direction, and. Um, that was really positive in the second half. I thought we, we really pushed to make sure the game went positively for us. And um, th- yeah, they needed something to reward them off the back of that, other than me saying, well done, or we're going in a good direction. Like the points on the board help, don't they? So um, the challenge now is to make sure that we not only maintain this momentum and positivity, but we build on it ahead of Ireland next week. Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. And it's not looking too bad, with the exception that the uh, departure, uh, the Dublin departure, quarter to five, was uh, delayed. It's delayed now uh, to uh, ten minutes to eight this evening. But the other two uh, flights uh, departing um, on time, uh, as London City was on time, and the Liverpool LM687, six o'clock, that's scheduled to be on time. Arrivals? Um, well, the Dublin um, arrival delayed until 25 past seven and everything else seems to be on time. That's the uh, new key via Manchester, the Liverpool and the London City, both of them on time. So let's have a look at uh, what's happening on the roads now very briefly. Uh, Braddon, until the end of the month, resurfacing work is taking place at Braddon Bridge and because of this, on weekdays, the road will be one way for traffic heading east into Douglas from Braddon Church roundabout through to Quarterbridge. Traffic heading west away from Douglas will be diverted onto the new Castletown Road and then onto Saddle Road. Also Douglas until the 28th, temporary lights on Victoria Road uh, until November, a section of Switzerland Road close for construction work and until the 2nd of February, temporary lights on Lord Street near the bus station. And uh, in Silver, Silverdale, the, until the 25th, the Silverdale Road is closed between the Balamoda and the Fildraw Road for resurfacing work. Well, those are some of the uh, traffic details. More, of course, uh, on the Max Radio website. Keyside Tyres and Service Centre with one year's free engine warranty from Castrol. Get more with... Keyside. Significant constituency changes may be needed ahead of future elections on the island. The Isle of Man's Electoral Commission has published a 62-page report after carrying out analysis of the way general elections are conducted. Christian Jones has the latest. It's made 13 recommendations for consideration ahead of the 2026 election, which include new legislation hard-capping the maximum voter population per constituency at plus or minus 15% of the average of all constituencies. The average voting population across all 12 constituencies is approximately 7,000 people, and each constituency is represented by two members of the House of Keys. Among the recommendations include making it a legal requirement that no constituency has a voter population of above or below that 15% allowance, exploring the possibility of e-voting, and perhaps the one that's raised the most eyebrows, that the existing 12 two-seat constituencies remain unchanged. However, boundaries between Middle and Glenfaber and Peel, and Aaron Michael and Ramsey, have been recommended to be changed to ensure that the island is in compliance with international standards. But Onkan MHK Rob Callister hopes to change these proposals when they're presented to Timwald for debate, asking for Onken to return to its bigger constituency size. If that was given the go-ahead, the parish would reclaim parts that were lost to Garth and Douglas North. It's important to note, though, that the Commission has made no recommendation that Onken's boundary be changed. Mr Callister says residents remain dissatisfied, though. And I'm hoping my colleague Julie will support me. And that amendment will be to bring all of Onken back together. Now, what I've actually said is it's almost impossible that I will get the support from my colleagues for Onken to have three MHKs, even though all of the evidence says Onken should, given the size of its constituency and the number of voters. 
However, what I'm proposing to do for the whole of Onken to come back together, but only to have two MHKs in the future, that will sort out the discrepancy. And that's it for this evening. By the way, never miss an edition of Update because you can subscribe to the Update podcast and keep yourself right up to date wherever you are in the world. The programme is actually the island's most subscribed news podcast and you can find out details of this and all our other podcasts, of course, on the Max Radio website. That's at maxradio.com. Well, coming up after the news, Agenda with Phil Gorn. And then at 6.30, there's Chris Kinley with more of the greatest hits. Nine o'clock, of course, on a Monday, that's Brass with Ian Cotier and rounding off the evening after hours with Dave Moore. From today's update team, newsreader Christian Jones, producer Amy Griffiths, and myself, Barry Redfern, take care and have a good evening.